With Brandon Garrison now in the transfer portal, it only means one thing for shirts, and that we will wade through at least a sprinkle of tumultuous waters before we get to the end. You are Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen. We're available on all of your podcasting platforms, visually as well on YouTube. Find me personally on X at All Day O State. Today, we're partially brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment matter more with FanDuel because right now, our new customers get 200 bucks back in bonus bets off of any five dollar more winning bet get yourself started today by going to the fanduel.com slash locked on meanwhile we get started in the news of some of the potential basketball hires now again i contemplated back and forth whether i should do this off of my personal top list or some of the guys that i've been hearing potentially talking to Jad Weiberg list. So I've decided to do this as a two-part series. This part, we are going to sprinkle in some of the reasons why I think, um, obviously, Danny Sprinkle would be a, a good hire. Um, you know, we, we've been in on Steve Lutz for a long time. I really, really, really like Darian DeVries. But the hottest name right now in the coaching circle has to be Will Way. Will Wade was absolutely dominant at LSU, holding a 105-51 and record there before getting fired for a recruiting violation. Obviously, it's a bad look, but what he got fired for, 95%, if not more, of your quote-unquote blue bloods do on a daily basis and get nothing from the NCAA as far as retaliation. There's no even distribution of punishment in the NCAA. We understand that. As Oklahoma State fans, We've been able to embrace it. So if Will Wade is an NCAA villain and Oklahoma State is naturally somehow an NCAA villain, then why don't we just embrace the hate and bring Will Wade to Stillwater, Oklahoma? We already talked a little bit uh, the other day about how he took a 23-loss McNeese State team to 30 wins. Year one, instantaneously, after being massively successful, obviously, at LSU. They drew Gonzaga in the first round as a 12 seed in the Midwest region. He's only getting paid a couple hundred K. His buyout is between one and 1.25 million. So that seems pretty reasonable. And even if it's the higher side of 1.25, I'm pretty sure there's a multitude of schools that can afford that, even St. Louis and Pepperdine. If we were to pay, Close to what LSU did, which was uh, $1.3 million a year, right? It was a six-year contract, right around $8 mil, which puts them around the $1.3 million a year range. I think Oklahoma State could fall in that pretty comfortably. And one of the big things I love about Will Wade, if you watch some of the interviews that he has, he's very open, upfront, and honest when it comes to recruiting. He's told several guys, come to McNeese State, prove that you're a big-time guy, and then I'll help you get to an LSU or Oklahoma State or a KU. You just have to come here and prove it. So he was never trying to get guys uh, to stay at McNeese for years. He told every single one of his transfers, if you come here and prove that you're better than this level, then you need to go. Matter of fact, he had a couple players come to him this season and let him know that they're getting contacted. And one of them said, I don't want to be contacted, but schools are still contacting me. And then another one of his kids got a deal from a big-time power four school, and he immediately said, hey, man, I love you. I appreciate you coming to me first, but you got to go, man. You got to take that deal. His understanding of recruiting, especially since he's been on the dark side of the NCAA's watch list, is something that we're familiar with at Oklahoma State. So, again, this marriage does make some sense. All right, Josh Shirts. Josh Shirts is currently Indiana State. Unfortunately, somehow they got left out of the big dance, which we are going to talk about in, in, in the next episode. But their you know, 28 and 6 record coming in. They were on the tournament bubble. A lot of people thought they would get in. I thought they'd get in. They should have definitely got in. 
his offense by itself is worth the price of admission. It's wild. It's crazy. They are very smart, very disciplined. They're constantly moving, rotating, switching. They do a really good job of utilizing the pick and roll. They've got some crazy passing lanes that are set up just by them uh, running around the, the floor in what looks like chaos, but it's not, right? It's beautiful. And they allow a ton of space for the three ball. It's just a ton of fun to watch this team play. Robbie Avila is a very, very good basketball player, but I don't think he's quite on the level of Brandon Garrison. Yes, I know we'll get to Brandon Garrison, but the defense seems to be a little suspect at times for Josh Schertz and in Indiana State, but he's never had the athleticism of an Eric Daly Jr. or a Jamiron Keller or a Keon Williams or even a Brandon Garrison. Uh, another guy that I would love, 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 love to get to Stillwater, Oklahoma is a Danny Sprinkle. Danny Sprinkle has Utah State at 28 and 6 at the moment with a 108 and 48 overall record as a college head coach. But he also has another crazy cool offense that's very, very fun to watch go to work. And he emphasizes defense a considerable amount. The cross court design skip passes uh, allow separation to be created by misdirection and movement. They're a team that loves the extra pass. They're a team that loves to create a little bit of havoc defensively, and they use the dribble to orchestrate multiple screens off of one dude. So envision a Harlem Globetrotter point guard like you know running circles around somebody setting a screen. It is legitimately kind of like that, except for when he rolls around the, the screen guy, he'll roll backwards a few steps to give himself the opportunity to get open looks. It's very impressive. It's very creative. And you can tell by the way they do it, it is systematic. It is done on purpose. And it's something that would be massively beneficial in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And here's the last thing about Danny Sprinkle. Why I think you'd be a great fit in Stillwater is Danny Sprinkle has a relationship with Brian Montnati and Jalen Montnati. Matter of fact, the very first Division I offer that Jalen Montnati received was from Danny Sprinkle. That's because Danny Sprinkle has been, been able to create a really, really good relationship with Brian Montnati. So much so that there's a legitimate possibility that wherever Danny Sprinkle ends up, he could be trying to bring Brian Montnati on staff maybe not this coming season, but the season after, which would mean you get a lottery guy in Jalen Montanati if Danny Sprinkle is the guy. And we know right here, right now, getting in on the Jalen Montanati sweepstakes would be phenomenal because we're kind of on the outside looking in. Bringing in a Doug Gottlieb or a Danny Sprinkle would give us an inroad to get Jalen Montanati at home in a cowboy uniform. All right, so uh, those are some of the top guys at the moment. They're not only being looked at by Oklahoma State, but naturally being looked at by Michigan and Louisville and West Virginia and Washington and all these other heavy hitters that are looking in the coaching search. Okay, So now uh, we'll, we'll skip over to obviously some of the news about the transfer portal for Oklahoma State and as it pertains to Brandon Garrison and what it could potentially look like. It's not all that it's cracked up to be, but... Before we do that, I have to remind the fine people out here today, you got to begin your next journey in life with a Nissan, right? Every week we're picking a team that stands out, that has done more than everybody else and pushed it a little bit further than everybody else, just like the new 2024 line of Nissan SUVs. Right now, my money is on, uh, on Houston, but the Auburn Tigers could maybe be described as the pathfinder of the group. They've been thrilling to watch all season. We know Bruce Pearl's an absolute legend. They have a cowboy helping Bruce Pearl and Corey Williams. They've carved out a lane for themselves after beating Florida in the SEC championship game to make a nice run at the NCAA tournament, which is why they're a pathfinder. You better get out of the way or they're going to find their own way. You need to take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada to find your next big adventure, make sure you shop NissanUSA.com. Go there today to start your next big adventure. And speaking of big adventures, we have baseball season. We have March Madness kicking off. We have the women's tournament, of course, as well. And for you to stay up to date on all of the action, you need to go get squared away with Amazon Fire TV. It is your destination for sports, whether it be live games, highlights, or in-depth analysis. 
Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire Stick TV that you can plug in right away. They have millions of movies and TV episodes all for free with live TV. Whether it's the opening weekend for baseball or, again, March Madness, you're going to want to have Fire TV at your side. They've recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all faux free. That includes most of us here at the Locked On Network and most of the big-time pro and college conferences and leagues. Fire TV lets you dive into all the analysis, highlights, and more so you can stay up to date. We have great news, great entertainment, great gaming, and great travel channels as well with Fire TV, so you go check them out today. Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you have not checked out Fire TV yet, you absolutely should. Learn more today. Go to Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. Again, that is Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. All right, so, yes, Brandon Garrison is kind of in the portal. And when I say kind of, it does have an asterisk. And that asterisk is by 247 Sports from Brandon Garrison, what he told them was, I am not being contacted nor do I want to be contacted at this time from any coaches. Basically, what that means is he's putting himself out there to let people know there's a good possibility that he could potentially leave Stillwater, Oklahoma. But from what I've gathered from several people is most everybody on the roster has given guarantees that they will sit down and have meetings with the next coaching staff at Oklahoma State. There are going to be some players that obviously are going to be going no matter what. There's going to be some players that have such an attachment that uh, it's going to be difficult for them to return. But then there's also some players that love Gallagher, that love Stillwater, Oklahoma, that dig Oklahoma State, and they know what Oklahoma State should be, what they could be, and maybe a new coach can get us to that level. We have the talent that has not been debatable all year. What's been debatable and obviously disputed to the point of firing has been the coaching. The, the ability to coordinate a W in the last 90 seconds. It's, it's been a massive issue. But Brandon Garrison, again, has this asterisk that, yes, I am in the portal, but I'm not taking phone calls. Now, we all know that there's third party, I call them headhunters, that this is what they do. This is all they do for a living is they kind of help a coach at a school talk to a kid about another school. It happens, right? Unfortunately, this is the lay of the land. This is how it exists. But at least we do know that Brandon Garrison is going to honor his agreement to meet with the new coaching staff before he makes any major decisions. Now, we also heard or saw that Javon Small has entered the transfer portal. That also is not officially accurate. So again, if you see Javon Small's name in the transfer portal, just know that it's got the same kind of asterisk that Brendan Garrison does. A lot of these guys are very intrigued by the amount of money that we're willing to put forth to bring in a new guy. We have let all these players know that we did, we did drop the ball when it came to basketball. We dropped the ball when it came to recruiting. We dropped the ball when it came to NIL. Now, with that being said, we're still able to have multiple top 10 recruiting classes just in the last few years. That shouldn't change because of what is available at Oklahoma State to be offered. In the Big 12, all you got to do is get eighth place, and you're in the NCAA tournament. Is that what anybody's striving for is eighth place? Absolutely not. But again, these players, they understand where we are. They also understand that with this new coach, no matter how it shakes down, he will get more access and better access to NIL. I mean, we got to take into consideration that there is a decent amount of people that haven't been happy with Mike Boynton for a few years. Those same people are likely not spending the same amount of money that they used to or they would. It's just like the Ollie Gordon thing in the offseason. A lot of cowboy country was able to rally around the fact that we had to chip in $5, $10, $25 just to try to keep the roster. And guess what? We kept over 90% of the roster. So we as a fan base have proven that we will step up, we will pay money, we will help out when there's something worth sales pitching us on, right? It's the same thing for these, these players. 
So don't completely lose your mind when you see an Oklahoma State Cowboy entering the portal. Again, there's only two players that I think are leaving no matter what happens. There's a few that are going to be waiting to see who we hire and, and, and what kind of staff they bring in and who on the current staff is going to be retained, whether it be an assistant role or an analytical role. The relationships that have been established on the sidelines will be important to these players, and it'll be important to them to see how the next regime decides to do things. So if we get somebody like a Danny Sprinkle or Will Wade, I'd feel pretty high on keeping most of the roster together. If we were to get a Steve Lutz or a Josh Schertz, maybe we would be looking at a situation where we have to readjust most of the roster. But again, when you're in a full rebuild, it is what it is. You got to take the good with the bad. The good is we got out of the situation we were in. The bad is we could lose some of these roster guys. You guys know that's why I was a big proponent of Corey Williams. That's why I was a massive proponent of Doug Williams or Doug Gottlieb, Corey Williams, Doug Gottlieb, because of the Cowboy connections, because of the relationships that they already currently have, especially Doug Gottlieb with the current roster, the management there would have been pretty, pretty seamless. And if you didn't catch it, Doug Gottlieb was on a, a Twitter space last night, not my Twitter space. It was a, a coaching Twitter space. But he was very open, upfront, and honest about the, the coaching search and what you should look for nowadays and, and the role that NIL plays and the fact that it is too loosey-goosey. I mean, that's something even Will Wade mentioned. Will Wade has said, I don't like the NIL. I don't like the transfer market, but I got to do my job. And if my job is to utilize the transfer portal uh, to, to upgrade the players that inherently upgrades the university that I'm at at the moment. So it's a win-win. Doug Gottlieb gives us a good chance of, of Brian Montanati being a coach, which means Jalen Montanati comes to Stillwater. But Danny Sprinkle does the same thing. Does Danny Sprinkle have the ability to retain all of the roster? Maybe not. But Danny Sprinkle does carry a good enough name that he'd be just fine. And I think a decent amount of the roster is going to be receptive unless the new hires look a, a complete crap show. But I don't see that happening. The guys we're going after are being sought after by almost everybody, right? So we have a lot of competition, but we have something to sell that some of these places do not. Washington's not a basketball powerhouse. Neither is, is, is Michigan for the most part. I know they were cruising there for a while. With Juwan Howard, they were good when Juwan Howard was on the roster, but they've had times intermittently that they've been down. So this is a good opportunity for us to strike. We are, have another episode uh, where we discuss some of the other potential candidates. I really, really like what Chad Weiberg's doing. Um, I love the fact that we've been in conversation with a couple of these guys for a couple months now. So we're further along in this process than I think most people realize. We've already narrowed down some guys. We're we're waiting on a couple guys to you know finish their NCAA tournament run. And then uh, and then we'll have a decision pretty quickly. I do know that we're not going to kick the can down the road very long here when a, a, a couple coaches lose in the NCAA tournament, I would then expect news out of Oklahoma State country on who the new hire is going to be within 72 hours of a couple March Madness games if they go the other way. Now, obviously, if some of these dudes win and they keep winning, I mean, that you know extends the time frame for us hiring, but it also potentially extends the capabilities they're going to have financially. We're not we're not fighting at the bottom of the barrel by any stretch, but we're also we're not going to spend what Michigan is going to spend to get out of their situation. We're probably not even going to spend what Washington is willing to spend to enhance their position. But we are willing to spend significantly more money than I thought we were going to. Like I said, we would had conversations previously about coming up with five to six million by April 1st. That was a legitimate thing. That was happening two months ago. I didn't know that we would be able to get you know, up to the eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 million that you're going to need 
for the buyouts and the new contracts and the new staff and promotion of NIL and all that fun stuff on top of going after people in the transfer portal if we were to lose a few guys. Even if we don't lose a few guys, these coaches have a player or two that they're going to bring with them. And one of the players that can come with one of the coaches in the next episode has me very excited. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll save some of that. Real quick, before we get to some of the diamond action, some of it was great, some of it not so great, but the Cowboys and the Cowgirls both got a healthy dose of UCF in Orlando and in Stillwater. We'll talk about that right around the turn here, but real quick, I got to remind you that FanDuel is the bee's knees in the betting industry. Say goodbye, busted brackets, because with FanDuel, you can bet on every single individual game. Whether you're betting on a massive upset or you're riding with a one seed, it's time that you start doing your March Madness dance with America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $200 back in bonus bets off of your first $5 or more winning bet. That's 200 bones back to use on point spreads, money lines, over-unders, who's going to drop the next bucket, who's going to win the whole daggone thing. All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops today all the way until they cut down the nets. Again, that's Fandle.com slash locked on. It's the bee's knees. You need to enhance your, your bank, all right? Meanwhile, Cowboy Baseball falls in a series to UCF. Didn't see that coming. Sam Houston State was going to be a pretty good ball club. It's a 39-win ball club that went 22-8 in their conference and won in uh, the the, uh, Baton Rouge Regional against Tulane. So that was not going to be easy. (laughs) And then we beat the number one team in America. And then we get beat up quite a bit by the number seven team in America. And then we hammer OU, who has a very good record. And then we turn around and drop the first two to UCF. And not only that, it was another Rob Walton moment, right? Rob Walton hasn't necessarily been the reason we're losing all these games, right? We'll have games where we scored 19 runs, literally 14 runs, 21 runs. And then the very next game, we'll score one or two. This inconsistency is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Now, now baseball is an inconsistent sport, right? There's not a lot of sports where you get rewarded for failing seven out of ten times. But that's what baseball is. So you're not always going to be on offensively. You're not always going to be on on the mound. But if you have some consistency in one of those two areas, it'll offset the inconsistency of the other area quite often. Our problem is, we're inconsistent on the mound and we're inconsistent in the batter's box. I mean, we all know that this Rob Walton show has been dead for a few years. This has been happening for three years now. And I had somebody kind of get on my case the other day, uh, social media, which I understand he is a legend, right? I understand that he has more knowledge than almost anybody else in the building. But I also understand that his stubbornness has been an issue. I also understand his inability to notice when you should pull a pitcher. It's frustrating. His ability to leave a pitcher in while he's getting hammered is mind-blowing. And I get it. There's there's a dichotomy here where you want to walk the fine line of letting a guy work through bases loaded, difficult situations, But there's a flip side of I should take him out of the game. It's going to kill us. It's going to hurt his confidence, right? It's going to put him backwards. But we don't do that. And then when we have an ace like Gabe Davis, he comes in and he hits a batter and he misses pitches and we lose that way. So, like, it makes me want to pull my hair out. Now, softball, on the other hand, thank you. We love you, Coach Kenny Gajewski. 
as that UCF series was a sweep. And UCF softball, to my knowledge, is better than UCF baseball. UCF softball is traditionally pretty decent from what I've I've been told. UCF baseball was going to take some time. Well, that didn't go so well. Just like, uh, you know, some of the other sports, basketball, football, when you're in the Big 12, you're going to get the benefit of having plenty of opportunities to enhance your profile. So that hasn't changed. Big 12 play is upon us. We've we've got to do some some stuff here now for baseball to get on the right track, but softball keeps cruising, keeps us in the running for a Big 12 title. The Big Bad Wolf is right up the road, but as we've already watched this year, OU is susceptible. Kelly Maxwell is susceptible. Their pitching staff is not quite as good, not near as good as last year's. They don't have the greatest home run hitter in the history of of softball on the team anymore. They're gettable. Is it easy? No. Is it possible? Yes. Do we have the talent? Yes. Do we have the, the hitting and the defense? Yes. I don't know if we have the pitching to beat OU this year, but again, in the Big 12 title, all you need is one. Da, 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 da. You don't need to beat them two out of three games. You don't need a series. We've won a Big 12 title over OU. We can do it again. And if this softball team keeps cruising, it does make the frustrations of baseball more manageable. But back to baseball, I have a feeling that's how this season is going to be. Right? We lose the games we need. And then we absolutely dominate the games that don't matter. So this is a couple different times already that we're down in a series and then we've already lost the series and then we score 20 runs in game three. We do nothing, game one and two, and then we'll drop 14, 19, 21 runs in game three. That's, it's maddening. That might be what this season is. It might be a maddening season where we win some crazy games, do some crazy things, but lose a lot of series. We keep ourselves at the bottom of the Big 12 while simultaneously freaking people out in game threes. It's it's frustrating. And I'll tell you this, you know, the Mike Boynton hire does kind of derail any other potential firings we were going to do. The next coach on the hot seat is Josh Holiday. That's just point blank period. See, Kenny Gajewski is waiting to get the stadium he's earned and deserved. Meanwhile, Josh Holiday got the stadium that Oklahoma State has earned and deserved. And fair, it's fair to say in the beginning of his time at Oklahoma State, he did earn it, right? Year two, we go to Omaha. We're playing for Big 12 titles every single year for the first four, five, six years. And then something happened, right? I don't know if it's the transfer market, NIL era, something. Something caught up to us recently, and we're having a hard time digging ourselves out of it. It's weird. And it's just like, for whatever reason, Mike Gundy will not fire Casey Dunn. For whatever reason, Josh Holiday will not fire Rob Walton. Both of those things make no sense. Both of those things statistically and visually have reasonings for firings. But again, this is like when you get a cowboy, it's phenomenal. He'll stay forever. But sometimes it's really hard to get rid of them when they're a cowboy. That'll stay forever. I was hoping Boynton would last a little bit because I knew baseball was a little precarious. Uh, We are going to have to have a come-to-Jesus meeting with Josh. I don't think he gets fired this year, but things will change if this is going to be the continuation of how baseball goes recently under Josh Holiday. All right, y'all. So we're going to have for this one right here, we're going to talk about future candidates. Well, some of the top candidates that I know we've had deep conversations with on the next one. Until then, you know I love you. As always, God bless. Go Pokes. Thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State 
Go like the daggone thing. Share, comment, subscribe. Leave a review. Hit the stars. Later, taters.